This is the last video for Lesson 25 about triangles and quadrilaterals, and this is about scale drawings using proportion and geometry. This is 25E, and if you've missed the previous videos for Lesson 25, they're linked in the description for you. Indirect measurement is a way to find measures when we can't actually measure something. We can use proportions and corresponding parts to find the measures. We learned about proportions in GED Video 6F, and that's in the description also. A scale drawing is a drawing that uses a scale. That's a ratio between two measurements and to make an object smaller, which would be a reduction, or larger, that would be an enlargement, than the real object. So one inch could equal one foot, or one centimeter could equal one meter, or one inch could equal three miles, like on a map. And all the distances will be in proportion to corresponding parts of the real thing. So I have a map of Chicago here, and this is Chicago, and this is the suburbs. And if you look right here, that's O'Hare Airport, okay? And it says on the map that one inch, I measured that that's one inch is four miles. So that's our scale. It's one inch equals four miles. And I measured with my ruler from the edge of O'Hare Airport to the edge of Lake Michigan, and it was about three inches. So if each inch is four miles, and that's three inches, we know it's about 12 miles from the edge of O'Hare to Lake Michigan, straight across. See? This one inch equals four miles becomes our fraction. We get one-fourth equals the number of inches we measured, the three, over how many it actually is, x. Here we have a map of the United States. And one inch equals 300 miles. It tells us on the scale right here. One inch is 300 miles. So we know we can use 1 300th as our fraction. Right here we have Phoenix, Arizona, and right here we have Austin, Texas. From Phoenix, Arizona to Austin, Texas, I measured it. It's about three inches. And we can write a proportion. It's the map distance of one inch equals the actual distance of 300 miles. Then that's going to equal the three inches that I measured over X, that's going to be the actual miles of the distance between the two cities. We cross multiply for our proportion. We get 1X equals 3 times 300. That tells us that it's 900 miles between these two cities. Okay? It's 900 miles straight. All right? Now, St. Paul, Minnesota to Springfield, Illinois is about 1.5 inches. So here's St. Paul, Minnesota, here's Springfield, Illinois, and I measured and that's about 1.5 inches straight across from city to city. So we use the same 1 300th fraction, and it's going to equal the 1.5 inches I measured over however many actual miles it is, x. And we cross multiply, we get 1x equals 1.5 times 300, and that tells us it's about 450 miles from city to city. Okay. Now, floor plans are layouts of rooms that show the location of walls and windows, doors, and possibly even furniture. This one shows washer and dryer and countertops and the bathroom, the sink, and the bathtub and everything. And they're drawn to scale and show us a map of the architecture. And this floor plan shows the exterior measures of the building. If you look, it says that this is 26 feet across here. This is 34 feet this way and it's 30 feet this way from this corner to the edge of the deck. And the scale is one inch equals eight feet. So we could find the measures of the room of any of these rooms by using the one inch equals eight feet. Our fraction is one eighth, one eighth, and it's gonna equal the number of inches over the actual measure, see? Here we've got a two bedroom apartment and one inch equals six feet. What's the area of this yellow bedroom? So I measured it this way with my ruler and I got 2.5 inches, and I measured it this way and got two inches. Our fraction is one six. Here's the actual measure for the length, 2.5, and that's gonna be over L. We could use X, but we're trying to find length, so it's better to use a variable that helps us, like L. We cross multiply and get one L equals 2.5 times six. It tells us the length is 15 feet. So the actual length is 15 feet going across this way. For the width, we use our same 1 6 
and it's going to equal the 2 inches that I measured over W for width. So we get 1W equals 2 times 6. We know the width is 12. So we're not done. We need to get the area, and area equals length times width. We do our 15 times 12 and get 180 square feet or 180 feet squared with the little 2 exponent. Okay? A floor plan is drawn to a scale of 1 inch equals 4 feet. Here's our fraction, 1 fourth. And the kitchen floor is 3 inches long and 2.5 inches wide. How many square feet of tile is needed to tile the floor? Well, to find the floor tile, we need the area of the floor, don't we? So we're going to have our floor plan, 1 inch, is the actual 4 feet. We have our 1 fourth here. We do our length and our width just like we did for this one because we need to find the area. So we've got 3 inches long, that's the length. We cross multiply and get 1L equals 3 times 4. So we know the length is 12 feet. The width is 2.5. So now we've got the 1 fourth equals the 2.5 over width for W. We're going to have 1W equals 2.5 times 4 or 10 feet. Now we do the length times the width and 12 times 10 is 120 square feet of tile. All right. For this one, a floor plan had 1 quarter inch equals 2 feet. What is the width of a patio that is 3 and 3 fourths inches on the floor plan? We want to write our fraction, but we already have a fraction here. So we can turn that into a decimal of 0.25. And 3 fourths is 0.75, so we know 3 and 3 fourths is 3.75. So now we've got 0.25 over 2. And it's going to equal the measure from the ruler on our floor plan, 3.75 inches, and that's going to equal the width, that's going to be over the width. We cross multiply, we get 0.25 times W equals 3.75 times 2. 3.75 times 2 is 7.5. Now, we can divide both sides of this equal sign by this 0.25 coefficient. We get a 1, same numerator and denominator. We have 1W, and when we do this division, we get 30 feet, so we know the deck patio is 30 feet wide. Okay? So keep in mind that you can convert fractions to decimals to make it easier. All right? Now this one is a little bit different, but I wanted to show this to you because people make a big mistake when they double square footage. Emma's vegetable garden is 9 feet long and 4 feet wide. If she doubles the square footage of the garden, can it be 9 feet long and 8 feet wide? So the mistake people make is they double both numbers. They think, oh, I'm doubling, and they double both numbers, but you don't do that. Nine feet long and four feet wide would be 36 square feet. To double the square footage, we would be doubling this 36. 36 times 2 is 72 square feet. And 9 times 8 is 72. So yes, nine feet long and eight feet wide would be the measurement for a doubled square footage of that garden. See? What happened is she had a nine foot by four foot square garden square foot garden, it was 36 square feet, and she doubled it by putting another 9 by 4. So the only measure that doubled was the 4. See that? The 9 stayed the same. Can the garden be 18 feet long and 4 feet wide? That would double it. Here she's got the 9 by 4 garden and another 9 by 4 garden, but she lined them up this way. So now the 4 foot part is staying the same, but the 9 foot part is doubling to 18. See? So be careful when you're doubling square footage, only one of the numbers are going to double, okay? A map shows a scale of 1.5 inches equals 12 miles. How many miles is 7 inches on the map? So here's our fraction, 1.5 over 12, and it's going to equal the inches on the map, the 7, over what the actual one is. We cross multiply, 1.5x equals 7 times 12, which is 84. We divide both sides by that coefficient, 1.5, and we get x is equal to 56 miles. So we know the 7 inches is 56 miles on the map, okay? Now here, the purple lines are roads, and the capital letters are towns. So we have town A, B, C, D, and E, and 1 inch is equal to 30 miles. So how many miles is it from A to B? Well, you could quickly say, because this is a unit rate of a 1, we could easily say 
if 1 is 30, then 8 is 240, all right? But we could do it like a proportion. This is our fraction, 1 30th, and it's going to equal 8 inches over the actual one. We cross multiply and get 1x is equal to 8 times 30. So we know it's 240 miles from that town to that town, all right? How many more miles is it from A to B than it is from B to D? So in this one, it's a couple of steps. We need to find the actual mileage of A to B and then the actual mileage of B to D and then subtract to find how many more the one is from the other. So we already did A to B, that's 240. From B to D is six inches because it's a unit rate. We could quickly just say six times 30 is 180, but as a proportion, we use our 1 30th and it's going to equal the 6 inches over x. We have 1x equals 6 times 30, so it's 180 miles. How many more miles is it from A to B than it is from B to D? Well, that's 240. That's 180. We subtract and find out that that one's 60 miles more. See? So proportion is an equation that says two ratios are equivalent. And a proportional relationship well, that's a relationship between two quantities, like one inch equals six miles, in which the ratio of one quantity to the other quantity is constant. The ratio doesn't change. So in this one, it didn't matter if we used seven inches, four inches, five inches, 27 inches. This would still be the same. So we could plug any number in here other than seven and then find the mileage. See, this is going to be constant that proportion. So now you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 307. Just make sure that your answers make sense. When you see a word problem and you do the math and it comes up with a crazy answer like a living room is four and a half feet long, that doesn't sound right. Or what if it said a building was only three feet tall? Well, no, that, something's wrong. Okay, maybe a decimal point or some, somehow you did your math wrong. So make sure they make sense. Okay. If you need more help, there's going to be links to these videos in the description along with that proportions one and the previous videos for Lesson 25, and these are helpful too, all right? They talk about scale drawings and stuff. Our next lesson is 26. We're done with Lesson 25. We're going to talk about area and volume of 3D figures that have irregular shapes. So it's not just a cube anymore. It might be a cube with a triangle on top or something like that, all right? So practice this. I hope you do well on the skill focus. And remember, if you ever have trouble, just retrace your steps and figure out what you missed. Because usually when you have trouble in math, it's because you missed a lesson. You, there's something you didn't learn that you should have that would have made your life easy. All right? Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.